Business owners, if you want to increase your profitability and improve your growth, then you need to reduce churn. You need to get every department involved in doing their part. And today we're going to talk about the role that product development plays and the sales department play in reducing churn. Hello, my name is Bill Arnold. I'm president of Prevail Marketing. You may find us at prevailmarketing.com. And every day we try to give you a video which provides you with some guidance, information, and ideas to improve your business, to grow your business through better sales and marketing. For the last few days, we've been talking about client retention. The reason we're spending a few days on it, it is so critical. It is the one aspect that people spend very little time doing. You spend all your time, effort, and talent, and energy to get client acquisition, and then very little effort to retain them. You relegate it to one department, and that department usually only deals with crises. That's unacceptable. You need to get your churn below 7%. And by paying attention to the ideas we've talked about over the last few days and we'll talk about for the next couple of days, you can accomplish that. Today, we're going to talk about your product development team and your sales team and the role they have to play and the role they need to play. Let's talk right away about product development. What role do they play? Well, quite a big one. In fact, most of the times, their impact on client retention is negative because they don't listen to the client. They don't pay attention to the client. So let's begin with the very fundamentals. Don't break the product. I'm talking now about B2B SaaS in particular. I've seen so many CEO founder owners who are the principal engineers, who are the, the brainchild behind the product, who believe that they understand what's best for the building the product out. And they often have this very, very uh, shortened uh, sprint period of time for, from new updates happen. I have had was involved with one client every week wanted to update, update the product. And I know if you're an engineer, if you're a developer, you're saying, no, we want to update it continuously. We don't want to, well, that's fine, but everything has to be QA'd, number one. If you do not QA it properly, if it goes into production and it breaks things for the client, you're going to lose the client eventually. I promise you, you know, it's okay to be rambunctious and build things out on a quick time frame when you are in the beta, beta program. I get it. Nobody's really using it. Nobody really cares. But once your customers are using it for their production, for their business use, you have to now take that into account. You have to make sure when you release something, it's not going to break anything. It's not going to create a problem for the customers. It's not going to cause them an issue. If they do, they're going to look elsewhere. We're going to talk about what those updates ought to look like, but number of card rules don't break it. Okay? Product updates, we talked about the frequency of updates a little bit, but now we're going to talk about it specifically. What is the reasonable schedule? Again, I know a developer, CEO, founder who said every single week, and that was too slow. He lost a lot of clients because of that. A lot, okay? Why? Because he would change the UX UI. He would add a feature set to it. He'd move things around because he envisioned it was better. Well, the client had workflows built on that. They had people trained based upon that UX UI. He had people who were pre-programmed to do things a certain way, and now it all changed. Their business came to a screeching halt, or it didn't work at all for them, and they had no notice of it. So what happened? They would get angry. They would call up and say, what are you doing to us? You shut us down. Who's going to pay for this? So if you have... Regular updates, make sure they're not only QA'd, but make sure you give plenty of notice to your customers so they can make adjustments as necessary or ask questions, get educated, train the right people. What is reasonable notice? They should have at least two weeks, two full weeks, 14 days notice before it goes live. And what kind of notice do they need to get? They need to get actual screenshots. They need to get actual videos of it changes that are being happening. That's the kind of notice they need to get. Not just, by the way, this change is going to happen. They need to see how it's going to be in production. So if you want to keep clients, make sure they're given notice. And that notice should be needs at least to be at least two weeks. Okay. Also, listen to your customers. Again, I've seen many CEO founders who thought they knew best because it was their idea. And that is fine in the beginning, but at some point they need to release control and hand it back to product development team to, to needs to listen 
to the customer. Now, I'm not saying you make your product changes based on the whim or wish of a particular customer. That'd be disastrous, okay? Nobody wants you to do that. But if you have a number of customers who say, this UX UI is not right, it, it's cumbersome, it doesn't work for us. If you have a number of customers saying, by the way, your competitors are going to have this feature in a couple months or have this feature now and we need it, better listen to them because they will migrate to your competitors to get that feature set. So pay attention and make sure that you are providing them what they need. That goes back also to the product roadmap. Now I understand a lot of uh, production departments do not want to lay out what we're going to do as far as the roadmap because it's confidential. I get it, to some extent, I get that. But if you're releasing something next quarter, it's no longer confidential, okay? It's no longer gonna be something you gotta keep under wraps. You can let it out and you can let them know, anticipate this coming. Why do you want them to anticipate it coming? Why do you want them to know about it? Well, maybe again, they've got a competitor who has that feature and they're talking to that competitor. If they know you're going to have it in three months, four months, they might be patient. They might say, I'll stick around because all I needed was that feature to make me happy. So make sure you communicate your roadmap to your customers on a timely basis. I recommend give them six months notice, give them a year's picture of what's generally gonna happen, six months specific what's gonna happen. That's ideal. And if you do that, you're gonna find that client retention does improve, I promise you. Let's talk about sales a little bit because sales has a major role when it comes to customer support. Think about this. Sales the one who built that relationship. You take consultative sales, they built that trust. They built the fact that there was a an understanding between the parties of what was going to accomplish, what they were going to do for them, how this was going to be done. And what happens to sales? As soon as the sales is sold, the product is sold, the licenses are signed, the contracts are signed, they walk away, goodbye, good luck, and they don't bother returning until renewal time. And when that happens, the customer's like, well, who are you? I thought you're, I thought you're here for me. You didn't come back, you're just after my wallet. I don't trust you anymore. You're after that quick buck. If you want to maintain client retention, keep sales involved. Now, I know, I know, I'm, I'm listening, I'm hearing you say, well, sales not paid to do that. They need to be. They need to be paid to keep involved. There needs to be some consideration, some compensation, because they are going to contribute in a much greater fashion than the little bit you're going to have to pay them to do it. Okay, and they're going to benefit as well because they can get up sales, they're going to get the renewals easier, all that stuff's going to happen if they stay involved, but they need to be compensated <coughs> to provide regular engagements with the customer. We're going to talk about that. So first thing they need to do is be part of the onboarding team. Don't just hand it off to the onboarding team with the contract saying this is what they want. You need to be there to actually introduce the parties to each other. You need to say, these are the people on the onboarding team, the operations team, and this is the role they're going to play. This is how they're going to interface with you. And, and praise them up. Talk them up. Say, hey, look, these are the best we have. These people are going to be phenomenal. I got you the best team. And they're going to take care of you. At the same time, make sure that anything you agree to in that contract that may not have found its way into the contract, but things that you talked about in the sales process that you said we will do for you, make sure you talk about that in the onboarding meeting. Make sure you cover everything. And then you'd say to the customer, is there anything else we missed? Is that everything? And they should be saying, yes, that's everything. But now you've got a consensus that everything's covered, everything's there. No, no side deals, no other expectations are there. It's going to go a long way. It's going to set out those expectations, okay? Make the customer on the onboarding feel special, okay? You know, make sure there's a sense of camaraderie, okay? One of the things that we've always done when we have new clients is we send them out some of our swag. And in advance of that meeting, so they come to the meeting, they get, a, they get swag, hats, glass, sunglasses, or whatever it might be, cups, mugs. And so, God, how special do you think that makes them feel? They come to that meeting and sort of like this welcome package they get, with our mugs, and we've even gone so far as for bigger, larger clients that the first onboard meeting, we're, we're there, we're, we were wearing their swag, okay? Think about the impression that makes out of the gate, okay? But things, other things a sales department can do, periodic check-ins. So initially, the first month, you check in every single week. You have every engagement, you say, how's it going? Everything going to your expectation. Just check in and make sure everything you're happy with, okay? Every single week, you check it by phone, not email, by phone. You pick the phone up and you talk to them. And you ask them how things are going. You make sure they're on board with everything that's happening to them. They'll appreciate that. 
once the first month goes by, every three to four weeks, you continue that process. It's just a check-in, a, 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 a take of their temperature, make sure, the, make sure the experience is going as anticipated. If it's not, you take that information back to the party that needs to handle it, and you follow through and make sure it was handled. Yes, it's not your, not customer support, but I guarantee you, you want that upsell, you want that renewal, and you want a referral. You should be getting referrals from these, from these customers. How do you get referrals? You keep that relationship intact. You keep involved. That'll give you something. Finally, the other thing that sales need to do, in fact, market needs to as well, is make sure that all every single contact, no matter how insignificant, is communicated and detailed in the customer in the CRM. I should be able to go to the CRM and know everything that's transpired with a particular client, all their issues, their problems, things they like, things they didn't like. If you do that, <coughs> it will allow us to track where things went south, when things went south, what we could have done to do better. Those are all critical elements that sales department needs to have. If you do that, if sales keeps involved, keeps that connection, you're going to get more referrals, you're going to get more renewals, and you're going to get more upsells. And retention is going to increase because that connection will remain. So, again, that's really what I wanted to talk about for sales and product development team. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to talk about the, the, uh, the um, operations department. We're going to talk about customer support department. Believe it or not, they got a role too. Yeah, I know that's surprised. And also, the one who the the one part of the company who has the most significant role, the C-suite. We're going to talk about their role, and it's not just setting the tone. There are actual items the C-suite needs to do, hands-on items they need to take. So, thank you for your time. If this was helpful, please like, please subscribe, please follow, please comment. Whatever's appropriate on the channel you're on, I appreciate it. We pay pay attention. Just take a look at the numbers today, and we're very impressed with the amount of feedback we're getting. Thank you. If you have questions about this, you don't need to wait for the next video. You don't need to just read my blog. You can come to us. We'll have a conversation. Fill out a form on our website at prevailmarketing.com. There's a phone number there for you to contact. There's also an email you can send us to us. We will answer. We'll help you with some guidance. Thank you. I appreciate you paying attention. I appreciate your time. Until tomorrow, have a great night.